So you join me here in the 2024 Toyota Supra three liter premium manual transmission. And I'm gonna keep this video very quick for you guys, give you my driving impressions over my week with this vehicle. I'm sure there's a ton of videos out there on the internet, uh, some of which might do a better job of explaining the exact characteristics of the car than I will. Uh, but I wanted to give you my take on it uh, from somebody who doesn't own a two-door sports car, owns a small little like warm hot hatch, if you will, and uh, you know doesn't drive a manual transmission all the time. Uh, but regardless, just want to keep this video short for you guys and uh, make sure you check out some of the other videos I have here in this car with my exact likes and dislikes as well as a walk around tour if you're curious about what a 2024 Supra 3 liter premium manual transmission has to offer here in this red exterior with this hazelnut interior. Now anyways, getting straight into my driving impressions. Well, it has been an absolute blast and joy to drive this vehicle this week. I mean, the weather hasn't even been the greatest. Uh, I was supposed to drive this up to Road America to test drive the 2024 Tacoma, and unfortunately it snowed and the weather said otherwise, so that didn't end up happening. I really would have liked to spend a little bit more time behind the wheel with this vehicle, um, you know, out on the interstate in like all driving conditions, if you will, uh, just to get a better feel for it, but it's been a blast to drive. Now, the thing that really has stood out to me the most about this vehicle is I would say it's refinement, and that's partly due to the fact that it has, you know, BMW DNA under the skin, but also has to do with, you know, just Toyotas in general. So um, being a newer, I guess, being exposed to Toyota more recently than other people, you know, I haven't, you know, driven a ton of Toyotas back in the day, heck, never even driven, you know, an 80s or 90s Supra, if you will. Um, but the three liter inline six cylinder turbo underneath the hood from BMW suits this car extremely well. It sounds amazing. It puts the power down very well uh, on these Michelin Super Sport summer tires, even when the temperatures are a little borderline, if you will. Um, but throttle response is just absolutely fantastic. The car itself with the manual transmission compared to the intelligent manual transmission from uh, Toyota, uh, basically their assistant with rev match downshifts, anti-stalling technology in second gear or higher, et cetera. Uh, basically, if you're a newer driver to driving a manual transmission, this vehicle is extremely easy to drive. Now, would I recommend it for somebody who's never driven manual? Probably not, but uh, as somebody who doesn't know heel toe downshifting like myself all that well, or isn't confident in doing it in just you know random cars out there that you've only had a little bit of time in, uh, the IMT system makes this car extremely easy to drive very well. Now, in terms of you know comfort, day-to-day -day usage, that's pretty much all I've been using this Supra for. It's awesome as well. Of course, this vehicle has adaptive suspension, so it has electronic dampers, uh, which can choose between a normal and sport drive mode, either in the custom settings or via the sport button down here. Um, the stiffness in normal mode is about right, and I think it is actually very, very comfortable on most situations in terms of uh, broken or rough pavement, and of course on smooth roads, the car is fantastic. Uh, but once you put it into that sport mode, the car certainly has a different personality. It stiffens up quite a lot. Uh, of course, the active exhaust opens up all the time, and you know throttle response and some other you know minor details like that really make the entire driving characteristics of this car quite different. And I actually enjoy driving it in sport mode as well because it automatically disables the engine stop start system, uh, which personally I am not a fan of and I think really hinders driving feel, if you will, of this vehicle. Now I will say the stop start system for what it is, is fairly smooth, but it is actually pretty aggressive. And I say it's aggressive not in the fact that it's rough to start up the engine again uh, when you're getting ready to put the car in first gear and depress the clutch. It's rough in the fact that it'll shut off the engine before you even come to a full complete stop. So you'll be like coasting in neutral uh, up to a red light or stop sign or something like that and uh, you'll be at like three miles an hour or something still and the engine will actually shut off and that just creates for a terrible feel, uh, kind of a shuddering stop if you will because obviously you're going to be depressing the brake coming up to a stop like that and then when you throw in the fact that the engine's turned off it's really not a smooth experience whatsoever. So 
Uh, I would recommend disabling the engine stop start off with the button here on the center console or just throwing the car in sport mode uh, because it will automatically do that. Uh, the gear shift with the six-speed manual transmission, very notchy. This car has just over 600 miles with, on it and uh, basically brand new and it absolutely feels fantastic. The clutch weight is absolutely amazing as well. Um, and I have really zero complaints about the transmission and uh, <laughs> of course the power behind uh, uh, in front of the transmission as well. Now, speaking of the power, I already mentioned the engine's very smooth, everything like that. It's rated at 382 horsepower, 368 pound-feet of torque. Of course, only through the rear wheels and a limited slip differential out back. I would say that probably feels about right in terms of the power output, but I would not be surprised if this engine actually makes roughly uh, you know, 400 wheel horsepower, maybe just under 400 wheel horsepower from the factory. Um, of course, you can do all that research online if you guys are curious about what the exact figures are. But typically when this car came out, it was rated at 335 and pretty much everybody knew uh, for a fact that was very low and um, underrated, if you will. So uh, I think 382 feels about right to me. And you can hear that lovely exhaust is absolutely fantastic. Doing a little acceleration here for you guys. Oh, chirp third gear. <laughs> oh, it is an absolute joy to drive this car. Oh, whether you're driving it smoothly or a little aggressively out on the street. Oh. You know, cars like this, I truly will miss if the day comes where we no longer have solely internal combustion engine vehicles, turbocharged uh, six cylinders, and a manual transmission. You just cannot replicate that in an uh, in EV, at least from what we've seen thus far. So, man, this car is something special. Now, anyways, going back to, I guess, interior or more about the car itself, uh, the interior bits definitely show some BMW resemblance with the iDrive 6 infotainment system and the digital gauge cluster. As I mentioned in my likes and dislikes video, it has iDrive 6, which does not support Android Auto at all. Uh, it does support wireless Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay, excuse me. Uh, and personally, as an Android user, uh, using the infotainment system with no Android Auto is a huge bummer and a huge loss. Really wish they would have updated that now here for the 2024 model year, uh, but unfortunately that is still not the case. The displays themselves are fine. Uh, you know, they look like a typical BMW iDrive system. It is a touchscreen display as well as you have the uh, iDrive controller down here on the center console. So if you want to use either input method, you can. Of course, support Sirius XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs. Bluetooth audio sounds fine in this infotainment. The display kind of hinders my usage and opinion of it, uh, but you can use Bluetooth if you want, just a little bit clunky in the uh, usability. Really do like the digital gauge cluster uh, and the way it's just prominently displays the tachometer, have your gear, uh, current gear selected in the middle, nice and large. It refreshes very fast. Your speedometer is on the left, as well as up there in the heads up display and all the information you need is on the display and pretty much nothing you don't is on there. So I uh, really do like that about it. And of course this uh, vehicle does feature most of Toyota's safety sense technologies, but unfortunately if you do get the manual transmission, not only is regular cruise control optional on this vehicle, this vehicle is equipped with the optional uh, cruise control package, includes a couple other driver safety systems. Uh, but you can't get adaptive cruise control with the manual transmission. You do have to stick to the ZF8 speed if you do want dynamic radar cruise control. Uh, outside of that, the hazelnut interior here on the uh, red exterior looks great. It's a very nice looking color combination. I have zero complaints in that regard. It would be really nice to have a heated steering wheel paired with the heated front seats. I know a lot of people out there probably won't be driving this car. Uh, in an environment where you you know really need the heated steering wheel, but there are chilly mornings where uh, either if you take the car out on the stock summer tires, or you know have different high performance all seasons on it, or heck, throw some snow tires on it, and want to do snow drifts, it really would be nice to have a heated steering wheel. So that is unfortunate. That this car does not have, and uh, you know the interior cockpits laid out very nicely for what it is and the space allowed, given this overall footprint is very small. But I would like to see, um, you know, 
not only the heated steering wheel, uh, it would be nice to have just a little bit more room inside of the cabin, obviously. Uh, that w I likely would have uh, you know, mentioned that on my road trip if I were to take this car up to Wisconsin, is the fact that you, know, you might get a little bit you know, cramped in here over a longer distance road trip. Uh, but I think in terms of the comfort of the vehicle, the suspension, uh, the you know, noise intrusion in the cabin or lack thereof, there really isn't that much noise in here and it's actually very quiet for what it is. Um, I think, you know, in most other aspects, it's fine, just a little small, and uh, that includes the cargo capacity or trunk area is going to be on the smaller side as well. So two people taking any sort of journey or trip uh, with, you know, two carry-on size uh, suitcases in the back probably will fill up most of the available storage capacity, and you do have little storage pockets in the front doors, but uh, in terms of any drink storage, that's going to be done via these two cup holders which are actually located in a very good spot and I've had no issues using the rear one uh, with a bottle and shifting the manual transmission. So that's you know what I like about the ergonomics on the interior, even though it is small, it's laid out fairly well and the material usage throughout is very good as well. So uh, overall, I think that's pretty much gonna do it for my uh, quick driving impressions of this vehicle. Uh, absolutely handles fantastic, rides well in the soft suspension. The IMT system, you know, with the auto rev match downshifts make driving this an absolute ease. And, um, you know, I guess my only minor complaint on the inside is the premium audio system is really not that great. And I haven't played too much with the EQ tweaking to see if I can uh, dial it in a little bit more to my personal taste, but it just doesn't sound um, like a substantial system under most of the audio inputs here on the screen. Maybe if you use USB and certain audio files, I'm not sure if it supports FLAC audio, it might sound a little bit better, but uh, with Bluetooth and Sirius XM, it sounds okay. Maybe like a standard, you know, premium audio system, but it would be nice for it to uh, uh, be a little bit more louder and have a little bit better, you know, bass response, given there are some dedicated subwoofers in the back. So, yeah, uh, there's the auto stop start system that I didn't shut off on this drive, but uh, you guys will have to let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of the Super yourself. Uh, do you enjoy it? Is it a car that you've actually shot for and uh, that you've, one that you've actually wanted to purchase or is there something that you would rather have? Now, I would really be interested to drive the new BMW Z4 as well because obviously they are gonna be platform mates. Z4 has the newer iDrive uh, infotainment system that does support Android Auto and has a few other amenities, if I'm not mistaken, that the Super actually does not. Oh, and obviously it's a convertible, which I think would be a blast to drive and hear more of the exhaust noises out the back. But maybe I will have to uh, try to get behind the wheel of a Z4 sometime and uh, compare it to you know my overall thoughts in the Supra. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on the Supra down in the comment section below. I would highly recommend it for, you know, this one comes in right around $60,000. Um, I'm not sure if you can find discounts on these vehicles given they have been out on it you know, for five years now, which is absolutely insane. Um, but maybe you can find these on the used market certified for a you know, good value and get you know, most of the same features. Obviously, you do have to get a 2023 model year or newer if you want the six-speed manual here with the three-liter uh, inline six. But I think either transmission you choose for the Supra will make it an absolute blast to drive and I would highly recommend it. So. Yeah, with all that being said, I appreciate and want to give a huge thanks to Toyota for sending this vehicle out for me to test and review for you guys. Um, really wish I would have been able to take it up to Road America. Not that I was going to be able to drive it on the track anyways, but it would have been nice to get a little bit more time behind the wheel and uh, have more environments with it rather than my you know day-to-day -day, you know run around town with it uh, because you know this car certainly deserves more and a uh, track session would be nice. So maybe at, in a couple months at the Mama Spring Rally, I can go ahead and take this vehicle out on the track or a similar Supra, but I recommend checking it out if you're in the market for a two-door sports car, uh, more on the luxurious or premium side of things. So if you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful, make sure to hit that like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, like I mentioned, leave your comments and thoughts on the Supra down in the comment section below. As always, I appreciate the support and hope to see you guys in the next one.